I got a ton of whiplash starting Wasteland 3 immediately after wrapping up a playthrough of 2. Because if my first impression of the latter was that it was a bit janky and low budget, then my judgement of the former is that it's the complete opposite. If Wasteland 2 is an unsexy CRPG, then I think that makes Wasteland 3 a sexy one, and it only took me a few frames to notice it. Slick aesthetic changes like better menus and UI are coupled with some timeless gameplay improvements, like how you can preview your hit chance against foes before committing to walking, and how your learned skills float to the top of the menu for easy comparison. And hell, all the dialogue is voiced this time, unlike how 2 limited its small VA budget to just key conversations. Because Wasteland 3's greatest improvement isn't one single change at all, but the tantamount collection of small little improvements only possible from a team that's made one of these before. At least on its default difficulty, Wasteland 3 isn't quite as crushingly inhospitable as Wasteland 2, both in terms of combat challenge and the challenges that exist around that combat. It's a game I can more readily recommend to non-hardcore gamer people for this reason. You aren't dehydrating out in the sands this time largely because the sands are no longer our setting. The Rocky Mountains of Colorado replace the dry deserts of Arizona, and a greater amount of natural resources has allowed for this part of the wasteland to be a bit less wasty. That's what's drawn an advanced team of desert rangers northeast out of the desert, to establish a strategic partnership with Colorado's de facto leader, Saul Buchanan, the Patriarch. Help him solve his problems and he'll help you solve yours, and that's the through line present from the game start to end. It's also the first of many unsavory partnerships you'll develop in Colorado, and one of Wasteland 3's biggest writing decisions, its consistent theme of cynicism. Where many RPGs will pride themselves on posing the player with Star Trek-style moral quandaries, Wasteland 3 characterizes its decisions as usually a moral good versus self-interest. The harsh truth of the Wasteland is that doing the right thing seldom pays, because those in a position to pay are usually somewhere on the fashy gradient. I learned this lesson pretty early on, when I offered to shelter refugees in my base of operations, and subsequently regretted that choice when that led to conflicts with the troops who were actually keeping things running. More than once you'll interact with slavers looking to track down escaped product, and need to contend with the reality that only one side of that conflict can reward you handsomely, and it's not the one that's going to make you feel good. If you're used to playing RPGs unflinchingly in the top row of a D&D alignment chart, then you're in for the hardest path through the wasteland. And to be honest, I kind of like that. If you want to stick to your moral compass in Wasteland 3, you need to do so despite what it does to your wallet. It's interesting, and dare I say realistic, where being moral doesn't exactly earn you bonus fun points with the movers and shakers of the Wasteland in quite the same way as lining their pockets does. Couple that with the fact you got a whole state full of these unscrupulous types, each with their own relationships to each other, and you've got yourself a compelling group of communities to interact with. But the largest boon for the writing here is quite a bit more simple than that. The most bespoke narrative change for Wasteland 3 is that, unlike its predecessor, it's interesting from the start this time. After two games with AI big bads, we start off with a more human conflict, with the first 20 minutes having as many memorable characters as the entire prior game. Because the Colorado's spin on this faction beef is that most of the major players in this conflict are involved in a sort of family drama, the expected quid for the Patriarch's quo is helping him deal with his three children who have all run off to a different corner of Colorado, each protected by a different faction, and each giving that faction a better blood claim to the Centennial State's throne. And it's from here where you go on a pretty straightforward CRPG adventure, aligning yourself as either a friend or a foe to the factions in question, and asking yourself if you even want to help the Patriarch at all. There's a much higher interesting things per hour quota that Wasteland 3 holds itself to, and it shows. There's a ton of little communities that exist in and around the factions here, whose cultures or religions are influenced by proximity to whatever pre-war resources or artifacts remained after the bombs fell. The lore here is a satirical and exaggerated version of American history and not-so-history, where the most influential figures are so both because of their power and the power of their propaganda. At least one American president is a named character in this adventure, and it isn't exactly a charitable representation. Because Wasteland 3 doesn't just use Americana as vanity on an otherwise unattached piece of literature. It says things. A lot of things. Things about America and the American dream. And it treats them with equal parts comedy and reverence. And that's also why some of its most authored moments are a joy. Because the soundtrack it reserves for key battles and events 
are covers of music about the very same. New renditions of America the Beautiful, Down in the Valley to Pray, and Battle Hymn of the Republic are only a few of the examples of key American history music that gets repurposed to fit Wasteland 3, and they are a treat. The first time one of your firefights gets overlaid with lyrics can be a bit disorienting, but it's wonderful what this little detail can do to give an individual battle more spectacle and impact. A higher degree of authorship exists on other key moments in the game too though, namely how the most important conversations will camera shift you into a first person perspective to see the other end of your chat. It adds more personality to each character, and though I would love to see them used for far more conversations in a potential sequel, the upside to their infrequency here is that it allows them to be more tightly choreographed, and you know they're proud of it when Among the First includes a subtly trembling hand foreshadowing health issues. But as great as some high quality individual scenes may be, a CRPG lives and dies by what's happening at the systems level. And I think that the same qualities that made Wasteland 2 good are still present here, perhaps most important of which is how unashamed it is in its own formula. Wasteland 3 is still just a CRPG, and just isn't a dig here. It's the same reactive narrative, the same freedom prioritizing gameplay, and the same turn based tactical combat that it was last time around, it's just got a bigger budget this time. But the fundamental ways you engage with Wasteland 3 are still largely the same, with the exception of an unlimited inventory. But that's a good thing, because Wasteland 2 is actually really good despite its lack of polish and mispaced opening, and any unflattering comparisons that I've made to it are really more of a praise of 3 than a condemnation of 2. What more could you want from a sequel than responding to some of its predecessors largest flaws? The overworld map is at least one tier less abstract this time, instead of piloting a detached icon you're driving a vehicle, one that acts as an almost 7th party member due to its ability to be outfitted with navigational and combat tech. Character building has also seen some major changes, largely consolidating a bunch of the old skills into more broad categories this time. The net result is that it's a bit easier to parse and a bit less granular, and for me that was a welcome change. Combat no longer has characters taking one turn at a time, but teams taking turn one at a time, which has a few downstream ripple effects. You getting the jump on your opponent now allows for the whole gang to get a free round of hits in, but you'll need to be careful because the inverse is also true. There's also a nice pacing touch wherein some members of the enemy team will take their turn simultaneously, both making the turn go faster and giving it a more frantic vibe. It won't do it with every turn, and I have to imagine that's to keep major actions from being lost in the noise, but it's a really cool effect. There's also more options within each fight, thanks to the fact that skills feed into a new system of mid-combat active and passive abilities. There are more buttons to press in general, instead of just positioning your folks and shooting, you have the ability to inflict status effects or fire in different patterns. There's never as many options as any of Wasteland's sword and sorcery cousins, but it's an appreciated addition nonetheless. I think one of Wasteland 3's coolest gameplay changes is a bit more nebulous, and one that isn't exactly something you'll see advertised on the back of the box, and that's its willingness to deviate from balance for the sake of making the player feel powerful and well rewarded. It sounds like a counterintuitive praise, and while I do appreciate a tightly balanced and difficult game, Wasteland 3 is flexible with how powerful it lets you get. Aside from the usual stat gains and new equipment, multiple times throughout my playthrough, I made choices that made a dramatic addition to my party, among which were new sidekicks that went beyond the party cap, and AI improvements to my vehicle that made it much stronger, and who knows what else I missed. It's liberal with powerful super weapons that it's okay with letting you overlook, and that just makes it all the more meaningful when you do get one. Rewards being more than just incremental numerical improvements or equipment that'll be replaced with something later is something I think more RPGs could stand to implement, and uncovering some of the ones I may have missed are a large incentive for a second playthrough on this one. And that second playthrough is no doubt something I will do, because Wasteland 3 is great, and I'm not exactly surprised by that. It is exactly what I wanted it to be and more. It's a polished, higher budget, better paced Wasteland 2 and its improvements and writing managed to put its own stamp on the series without betraying what made it so good in the first place. It's so unafraid of what it is that it basically just gives you the entire story premise up front within like the second mission, and it knows that its sheer quality will be enough incentive on its own. I'm most surprised by how much I enjoyed the settings and motifs here. I found its themes, narratively and musically, to be really powerful. I don't know if they'll hit non-United Statesians in quite the same way as folks who are playing from home turf, but even if you've never seen those Purple Mountains Majesty, 
the majesty of this game can still be easily appreciated. 